speaks out against the abuses of his people and becomes the victim of a plot to destroy him. The story of a Hebrew and of a Persian king whose vanity threatens the life of his trusted friend. A man of courage faces the jaws of death in a supreme trial of faith in Daniel and the Lion's Den. Starring David Burney as Daniel, Sherry Jackson as Joanna, Nehemiah Persoff as Malamir, Dean Stockwell as Hissar, and Robert Vaughn as Darius. After the Babylonian kings had destroyed the city of Jerusalem, the Hebrews had been taken into captivity and led back into Persia. Here they labored in servitude for their Persian captors. They were to build a city of learning, a project which had already cost the lives of many of their people. Despite their enslavement, the Hebrews clung to their faith and their hope in Daniel, a Hebrew blessed with God's wisdom. Daniel had been made a minister and was favored by King Darius, a fact presented by the king's other ministers and princes. Oh, that must tell me. Rumors of corruption and mistreatment of his people had reached Daniel. Now, over the objection of his fellow ministers, he had come to view the situation himself. Well, Your Excellency, do you see any starving people, any cruel taskmasters, any evidence of inferior material? Rumors, vicious slanders, as you can see, Your Excellency, carried into the palace by ambitious plotters and connivers. Ambition. It's a strange force in men, my lords. It can be very good or very destructive. His Majesty's royal lions, they have been moved to their new den. Would you care to view them, Excellency? Later, Prince Dumas. First, I would like to walk through the city of learning that's built in here. Perhaps I might learn something. I wish you'll walk with you, Your Excellency. No, I'm going on. I prefer. I urge you to take a guard, Excellency. These Hebrews could be treacherous and vicious. One never knows when they will turn. So I think you forget that I, too, am a Hebrew. Master Baruch, the king's high ministers have come in the splendid coach of Prince Malamar. Is the first minister Daniel with him? Yes, sir. Good boy. Expensive little toy you bought yourself, my lord. Well, we've all gotten rich on this project, Princess Sar. But I'll tell you this. I would trade it all to be rid of these knots I feel in my belly right now. If Daniel finds out what we have done, the king will take our heads. You should have brought him into the scheme, Hissar. You should have bribed him. Don't be a fool, Duman. Daniel can neither be bought nor bullied. That's why King Darius trusts him. And that's why the king made him first minister above us the true and deserving princes of the empire. And this plan of yours had better work, Hissar. We do not destroy Daniel. He will most certainly destroy us. Daniel has one weakness, the Hebrew god that he prays to. And our dear King Darius has one as well, his vanity. If we all play our parts correctly, we won't have to worry about Daniel any longer. Let us hope that the king's lions that have been put in your charge know their parts as well. They know them very well, noble prince. Especially since they have been kept as hungry as they are now. Let me have it. I need more stones up here. Bring it this way. Water, please. Here. Put it over there. 
Water bear. Joanna, what are you doing here with water bearers? Why aren't you with the women of your station teaching the children? What answer can I give to the great first lord of Medes and Persians? Send me not, Joanna. For serving God and our people in the high office I've been blessed with. I am still first a Hebrew. How many starving Hebrew children do you see about the court of King Darius? I have no answer for you, Joanna. I do what I can. Oh, yes. It is well known that Lord Daniel prays three times a day. What do you pray for, Daniel? I pray always for our deliverance from captivity. But sometimes I pray for simpler things, Joanna. Like the understanding of my own people. Water bearer. Pardon me, my dear Lord Daniel. I have to fetch the water for our thirsty men. Well, the masters take that away, too. time in six months I come among my people and I meet hostility the anger I see in your eyes why do I stand before the high first minister of the Medes and the Persians or before Daniel if you have no fears before God you have none before me this city you told us to build that would provide learning and solace for all the people it has destroyed us the royal treasury has spent enormous sums to see that the people were well fed well paid for this work then your ministers have grown rich We've never been paid. But with the lash and the whip. Our families starve for lack of food. The very stones they make us build with are so poor they crumble before we can lift them into place. We have paid for the finest granite from the quarries of Mount Isis. Cheap sandstone, Daniel. Full of cuts and faults. We've lost many men when the structures collapsed. Those who complained or refused to work disappeared in the night. These are terrible charges, Baruch. Can you prove them? See with your own eyes. Yes, yeah, show me everything. Careful, stand back. Peace haven't been fed for three days, as you requested, Prince Hissar. Beautiful. So fierce, so final, eh? Yes. But death by the lions is for high treason. The king loves Daniel like a brother. How can we be sure he will pass such a sentence? Darius will have no choice. Once he signs my proclamation, it's law. I agree. Daniel must be destroyed quickly. But this is a daring scheme full of danger for us. Yes, the old law of equal trial. What fools you both are. Would you rather let Daniel reveal our dealings here to the king? but will cut our heads off. What man could survive 12 hours in the pit with those ferocious beasts? Huh? Yes, that's good. Now, unhitch your horses and take them away. What is being done to my wagon? Withhold you respect, Excellency. What is my costly wagon doing down there? Minister, we have a problem here, one of divided opinion. Dear friend, Daniel. Well, how goes the building of my city of learning? That, my gracious majesty, is a question I cannot answer at this time. Well, I sense a problem here. Come, my friend, Daniel. We've shared many problems before. It's one of divided opinion, sire. The Hebrew masons believe that the stone they've been given to work with is of inferior quality. They think 
that column will not support the weight of the capstone. They fear for their lives, sire. A thousand pardons, gracious majesty. But your minister, Daniel, has seen fit to put my costly new wagon down there. My lord Malamar's overseers believe that the Hebrew masons are shirking. They should be given the lash. What is your solution, Daniel? The masons are willing to set the capstone to risk their safety. If my lord Malamar is willing to risk his precious wagon below them. Well, that is preposterous. Surely your minister has gone too far. No, 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 I think not. Daniel is famous for being a just and honorable man. Now, is the column sound, or is it not? Of course it is, Your Majesty. But these Hebrews would rather complain than work. In that case, there should be no objection to the old Persian law of equal test. Both sides should stand to lose something precious. But fair is fair, Your Majesty. Certainly my costly new wagon is worth more than a dozen Hebrew lives. Carry out the test. I cannot be sure, Your Majesty, but I will find out. When I have all the facts, I will bring them to you for your judgment. This is unfortunate, Your Majesty. Most unfortunate, but it's now, only a temporary setback. See what I mean, Dad. I do hope it doesn't interfere yes, with the little we'll celebration the off the walls. Yes. Celebration, Lord Hussar? What celebration? Your loyal ministers and the satraps from the provinces would like to present you with a gift. We had wanted to make it a surprise. Surprise? But I like surprises. Come. You must all attend me in my pavilion. Daniel? I beg your majesty's permission to continue my inspection. I should like to go up to the Hebrew camp. Well, I'm disappointed, Daniel. Your majesty knows that Daniel is your most devoted servant. Whatever Daniel feels he must do must be of great importance, I'm sure. Well, you have my permission, Daniel. Come, my lords. I'm anxious for your surprise. It's out of our deep love and respect for you, mighty King Darius, that on this, the anniversary of the kingdom, we might honor you with this great new law. Well, this is all very flattering. <laughs> Very amusing, Princess. <laughs> <laughs> we beg your majesty, let us make this honor in your name. Accept this petition, mighty king, as the last of your great laws. And the world will know how we, your princes and ministers, do honor you above all kings for all time. Read this law again, Miss Art. From this moment and for 30 days hence, no man, woman, or child shall pray to or petition any god or king, but Darius, for 30 days on pain of high treason. This shall be the 10th high law of the empire, and it may not be recalled. We, 
The princes and satraps of the empire do beg it to be so. Let it be carved in the law posts of every city and village in the empire, that the whole world may know the greatness of Darius, king of the Medes and Persians. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Never has such an honor been conferred upon a king by his nobles. this law would make me God. For a mere 30 days, your glorious majesty, we beseech you to sign our loving petition into law. What does Daniel think of this honor that you would confer upon me? Why, Daniel is the very reason that this petition is presented. Yes, without Daniel, we would never have thought of it. You know, there is no honor Daniel would deny you. His love for you knows no bounds. And you would never agree upon anything that was neither just nor good. So this, then, this uh, law. You all agree? With all of your hearts and spirits? Divine Majesty, may I have your permission to take this great new law to the scribes so it can be proclaimed immediately. my friends. And this evening, when Daniel kneels in his window facing Jerusalem and calls upon his God, he'll be signing his own death warrant. Now, is everything ready? The witnesses? Where are your soldiers, Malamar? They're in hiding, waiting my signal. Twenty pairs of eyes shall see him read the proclamation I had posted. Twenty pairs of ears shall hear him break the law. I wish this were over. There's so much that could go wrong. What could go wrong? Three times every day, Daniel kneels in that window and prays to his God. Yes, but suppose he reads the new law and decides to obey it by not praying. We all know very well that Daniel would never put a man-made law before the law of his Hebrew God. That's true, that's true. Isn't it uh, amusing that the very God that he worships so will be the cause of his death? If he comes now, let's not be seen. He's gone into the house now. Duman, get your witnesses into position. Malamar, come and see how nicely the fox has fallen into the trap.
quickly now, Malamar. Go to your soldiers, and when you hear us cry out, bring them immediately. Oh, Lord, hear. Oh, Lord, forgive. Oh, Lord, heed and act. I entreat you, O oh Lord, who art the fount of all righteousness, the wellsprings of mercy and forgiveness. Hear now the prayers of your children. Help me to quiet the suffering and to right the wrong I have seen this day. Make us strong in your spirit that we may accept the penance of your sins. But give us hope, O oh Lord, that one day the burden, the yoke of captivity will be lifted from our shoulders. Keep... Now, what is all this? Treason. My lord, first minister. Yes. You tell me about treason, Duma. <coughs> It is you who have committed treason, Daniel. It is you who have broken the new high law. Stand to order. Make a way for the king's minister. Stand back there. Your Excellency, what has happened? Now, these good people are angered, noble prince. They have seen and heard Daniel commit treason by breaking the new high law. There must be some mistake. The honorable first minister would never break a high law. Unless, of course, he didn't know of it. No, I knew of it. Someone took great pain to see that I knew of it. How fortunate the king's soldiers were close by to keep the peace. Or to enforce an arrest. I make no resistance. Honorable citizens, follow behind us to the palace. Your testimony as witnesses may be needed. And so, my most honorable king, all the witnesses have been heard and all the testimony has been taken down. It's been proven. Even Daniel freely admits out of his own mouth that he did pray to and petition his Hebrew God in open contempt and spiteful violation of a sacred law. Sacred law. It's a stupid and foolish proclamation that you flattered me in deciding. But your glorious majesty, by putting your seal upon it, you made it a high law, and therefore a sacred one. Well, then I unmake this high law. Not even the king can remove a high law, sire. This is well known. This is my praying each day, three times. Equally well known. Daniel admits he prayed to another god, that's true. High treason, let the punishment fit the crime, great king. You tricked me into making this high law, but you'll not use it to destroy my truest friend. And the most honest man in this kingdom. Are we not all bound by the same laws, your glorious majesty? The same that made you and preserve you as our king? And the same that provide the justice of equal trial? I will not deliver Daniel into the lion's den. Not for twelve hours. Not for one. A thousand pardons, your majesty. But Daniel is guilty of high treason before the law. Send this proud and stiff-necked Hebrew to the lions. And if, after the twelve hours of night, Daniel is still alive among the lions, then we, your three loyal ministers, will take his place in the lion's den. You have no choice, sire. You are as much a victim of the law as I am.
Daniel. I, who would have done anything to preserve you, have destroyed you with my vanity. I cannot believe this is happening. It is happening. They had to destroy our Daniel. He was too good. And my spirit is soiled and dirty. The scorn I gave him. I thought he served only himself and his Persian masters. What can I do, Baruch? Pray for Daniel, if you want. And pray for us. Without him, we're alone in this desert of misery. Hissa! Prince Hissa! Come out quickly! The Hebrew captives are coming. See them? Perhaps to kill us. Don't be such an idiot. They're just coming to pray for Daniel. If you must worry, you should worry about them. Some of these country satraps are still fiercely loyal to Daniel. Let us hope that this expensive feast we are setting out wins them over to us. Expensive? Did you say expensive? How much did it cost us? My fat little prince, sometimes I don't know which is the greater, your cowardice or your greed. Excellent servants, noble Darius, I proclaim I am innocent of all but serving my God and my king to the fullest measure. Beware of all evil laws such as this that condemns me and suspect the men that make them. My Hebrew brothers, Think of me kindly, if you can. And if you cannot, forgive me. Tell me that this living God that you have served so well and so faithfully will save you from the horrors within. Tell me, if it pleases his will and purpose, 
But if I am destroyed by the lions, then that too will serve. Farewell, my king. Lydian wine and roast meats and music. Join us. Honor us. I hope your wine and your music will bring you many friends this night, Hazar. For you will certainly need them against the mortal enemy you have made of me. Nothing's going right. In spite of all our expense, we haven't made one new friend. Lions haven't made a sound for hours. On your feet, little prince. Even now, the dawn is ending the night. Daniel, the twelve hours of night have passed, and your ordeal is over. You have been upright and steadfast in your love of God. Therefore, you have been saved. 
the mouths of the lions have been closed, so that through your faith all men may know the Lord is God, and your deliverance is in his love. Daniel! Are you alive? Your gracious majesty, I live as I am innocent before you and my God, I live! Daniel is alive! Delivered from the lion. The Lord sent an angel, and the fierce lions became as gentle lambs. Mercy. Have mercy on me. Daniel, plead for us. Save us. Please, a terrible mistake is being Silence. made. Silence. I cannot help you. Daniel cannot help you. You've condemned yourselves out of your own mouths. My king, would you have me put myself above the law for them? And I would not do it for you. No! 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 no. I have seen the wonder of your God, Daniel. While I rule or have the breath of life in me, I shall proclaim his holy name to all my dominions. Even greater. Daniel, through his faith in God, had triumphed. And King Darius had been made to see the dangers of his vanity. Together they spread God's word throughout the kingdom.